everyone, it's Ross, and today I got a real special treat for you guys. I have a few figs that are quite um, impressive, and they're ripening right now. Uh, we have something called Socorro Black that was found in New Mexico. This is a very pretty fig. I'm trying something new with these bags here. It's been raining heavily, and almost all of my figs have split. This is what a, a, a split fig looks like, and... This variety here is called Cavalieri, and this one is really, really tasty. The problem is it just splits. It doesn't hold up to the rain, and this could potentially be the tastiest fig I've eaten this year. It's just that when the fig splits open like this, and you get some rain, or even some water that gets in here, it dilutes the sugars immediately. So that's really a problem. Um, and for that reason, this variety is getting lower lower marks whereas I have other varieties here like black Madeira which also do split but not nearly as bad as Cavalieri those are not ready yet uh, we also have a black Madeira KK so a little different than black Madeira but very similar probably to Preto so that's ripening now and you can see I have the bags on those figs and I think the bags may help We'll see what happens when it rains tomorrow because we've been getting mountains and mountains of rain. I've probably got two inches of rain in the last week, which is a lot for here at least in, at one time. You know, I'd rather have that be spread out, I guess, but every fig that ripened in the last week was about 40 or so figs. I've had to throw them out, take them off the tree, you know, just a complete waste of my time. I'm hoping that the bag will stop some of this rain from hitting the fig itself uh, because some figs you know they're tilted more to the side or they're more drooping downwards and the rain will just fall right off of them but you also have some figs that the eye is facing straight up into the sky and that's not good you know the rain will hit the eye go into the eye if it's an open eye and it will dilute the sugar in the fig ruin it instantly the fig will start fermenting, spoiling, attracts bugs, fruit flies, really not what I want. So the ones that are facing upwards, I'm seeing if that will help the situation. The nice thing about this variety, and this is Italian 258, that's the, that's the variety we're going to talk about today. It actually gets honey at the eye every single time. Um, and it really puts honey at the eye before it's even ripe, which is crazy. Because this thing's still hard. It's a hard fig with honey at the eye, so you can't really rely on honey to be your main indicator of ripeness. It's really the softness, and none of these are really that soft, but they're all ripening right about now. You know, we pinched sometime in June, probably early June to get to this point. I think this is probably a mid to late season variety. I think it doesn't need as much of a head start as people would believe, but it's very productive. And it seems to hold up to the rain. Um, this year it seemed to do pretty well in the rain in the last week. But then again, I think tomorrow will be the real test. Some friends of mine have said the same thing last year. So I think this is quite a good uh, variety for this climate, humid climates. It also does really well in dry climates. This fig is just phenomenal overall. And it's becoming something very popular, uh, more so than it has been, even though it is it is very popular. It tastes quite similar, in my mind, to Black Madeira and Preto. And even Cavalieri tastes quite similar. They have a... Uh, even Smith, they have like a interesting sharp berry flavor to them that I'm going to describe for you guys in just a second. Because we have the figs over here. So we talked about the tree, right? We talked about... The earliness, I guess it's mid-season to late, the rain resistance of it. You know, I've already cut this open so I can just show you guys. Um, it's quite productive. You know, it puts honey at the eye almost every single time. This is one that I picked, or that fell off this morning, that wasn't really uh, ready. But it's still quite good. I ate the other half here. Still quite impressive, and I think that's why so many people like this variety is because... You can pick this early, and it still tastes really good. You know, whereas other figs, I have to wait 10 to 14 days, whoa, before they're really good. 
This one you could probably wait like five or six and be totally fine with it. Um, you know, tons of honey in here. Sharp berry flavor, like I've said. I'm gonna show you guys right now. This one was more sweet, but the end is finished with a sharp, lingering berry flavor that you could say is acidic. I'm not sure if that's really the exact the exact wording that would be best for this. But it's got like a bite to it, right? It's got like a sharp, like almost like a whiny, you know, that you kind of get on your tongue, you know, that, that wine aftertaste. It's kind of like this. And um, I think the closest thing maybe would be a raspberry to this. But it's very berry and very sweet with the honey. And this is a really complex, interesting fig that uh, if you're into that kind of thing, this is a winner for that reason. I think a lot of people realize just how complex this is. And I like this, guys, don't get me wrong, but I'm also a big fan of other figs that they're just really simple. Um, I like the really fruity figs or the light berry figs that kind of have more simple flavors. Like the fruitier ones taste like fruit punch, like some kind of variation of berry of that, you know? It's not really the most complex wine flavor of your life, you know, that a wine connoisseur would just pick out all these weird nuances within the within the, the taste it's more simple so this one here is very complex and that's why I think a lot of people really enjoy it and you have to admit I mean it's really quite a work of art in terms of just nature doing its thing it's just real good you know simple as that this is a 9 out of 10 for me a must-have variety I think and so far I'm leaning towards this being better than black Madeira better than Preto I also have one in the ground I don't know if I mentioned this but I do want to do a comparison between black Madeira Italian 258 all those figs that kind of taste similar to each other I would like to do a comparison and over here, guys, is my Italian 258 tree. That's the limb right there. We just put it in the ground this spring. So we've yet to go through a winter with this. Here's Noir de Barbantain, by the way. And this thing's growing really fast. Uh, a lot of my trees in the ground here, it was so dry in this location in like June that I think they got a lot of scale, but they outgrew the scale, or I took some of it off and they're really putting out a lot of growth now. And what I need to do, I think, to make these this tree a bit hardier is actually pinch it now. Get the limb to stop growing and harden up a little bit. And I think with this microclimate here in zone seven, this tree will survive and it will put out a, a pretty decent crop every year. There's a guy in Jersey only 20 minutes away in zone seven as well, you know. We get a little bit of extra heat from the Delaware because we're along the Delaware him and I but I think um, this one should do really well so guys I just want to finish off this video of Italian 258 by saying that yes Italian 258 is a 9 out of 10 but most figs I've eaten this year are 8 out of 10 you know they're really really tasty figs like Ron de Bardot the Trace of Splace uh, you know Smith Azores Dark well those are not 8s but you know, I've had some really tasty eights, and it's hard to put them in the nine category, but they're all so close. And that's the point I want to make, is that yes, Italian 258 seems to have quite an edge, and it is a must-have in my opinion, but it's really so small of a difference between an eight and a nine, I think. You know, there's, there's a lot of really tasty figs out there, and I think almost everyone will find this fig, at least at the very least, very complex, very interesting. But it's not going to be like everyone's favorite. It's not. Um, and you know what? It's not really something you have to have to have, I think. Yes, I recommend getting it. 
But like I said, the difference between an eight and nine for me and a lot of the figs I've eaten is so small. It really is. If it's an eight, it's a solid fig. Um, and I've probably eaten at least 30 eights this year. 30 different varieties, I could say, are eight out of 10. So that's quite a bit. And, you know, that's just the point I'm trying to make is that it's just such a small difference. It's only really a small notch higher than something that's already really good, you know? Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this one. That was Italian 258. And I hope to get a nice little comparison video for you guys with some other really top tier figs and talk about them. Alright, so take care.